Welcome, welcome. This is Marnie Swedberg here today with Carol Brewer. We're going to be talking about some voice strategies for speakers. We're going to discuss seven simple ways you can relax your voice, healthy throat recipes that actually work, energy for or eating for energy rather, foods to avoid, time to rest and pray, how to create a just in case voice kit that you can take with you. How, well, how and why you need to consider temperature control, what to do when they serve you food right before you're going to speak, and the ah, dry mouth reliever, plus when you must perform with a sore throat. Our guest today is an author, a speaker, and a singer and songwriter. Her name is Carol Brewer. She presents life-transforming women's events. She hosts Bible Chicks podcasts, has four music CDs, and has written two inspiring books, Cooking Up a Song and Revitalize. You can learn more about her over at her own website, carolbrewer.com. And you can also invite her to speak via her uh, profile over at womenspeakers.com. Right now, I'm super excited to welcome you to the stage. Uh, Carol Brewer, welcome, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Marty. What a blessing to be with you and to talk about one of my favorite things. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, I'm a singer. I'm a speaker. So being healthy is really important, especially if you've got a lot of engagements coming up. You just have to be ready. And so it takes some dis discipline. It takes uh, mm -hmm. some care, just like with the rest of our body. And uh, you know, I wanted to share with you just a little bit about vocal cords, because let's let's talk about that. It's right behind the Adam's apple. And if you put your hand just gently on your Adam's apple, right behind there are two little fleshy strands and they hit together and they get skinny and they get fat hmm. and you know you can you can with those vocal cords the brain is the computer right and so the brain the vocal cords respond automatically when the brain i want to talk high and do a little voiceover for cartoons or i want to speak with my wonderful deep voice and if you're a singer it's oh, <laughs> and in a micro millisecond <laughs> Those vocal cords switch and change and, and shape themselves to hit those tones, hmm. you know, which is to me miraculous. It's mm -hmm. a God given gift that we have this hmm. voice box of ours. Isn't that incredible to think about? Yes. And we, you know, it to me, just knowing that makes me a believer in God because hmm. it's a beautiful creation and how we have given such an incredible gift to be able to communicate with other people with this mm. voice box. So we're going to talk about how to take care of it. Oh, that's so fun. And one of the reasons you're here today is because when I had laryngitis here just about a month and a half ago, and I was coming up on a large speaking trip, I needed to speak six times and do a concert and, mm -hmm. and uh, had no voice laryngitis. And uh, you reached out and you shared some of your strategies with me. And I was like, oh, we got to share these with everybody, not just Marnie. Yeah. Everybody gets these. So it's so good. And I know you got even mm -hmm. some more than you had time to share with me then. By the way, just following up, I still do have a cough. But um, God did a vocal cord miracle for me. We were talking before we came on air how he has done this for us before and will do it for us again as a speaker. When you step out um, and you say yes and you make a commitment, God is so faithful. And sometimes he does sit us down and he says, nope, you don't get to go this time. But most of the time when you make that commitment with God, um, he he takes you and he even does miracles like I, I was telling you, I was sitting at the dinner at the banquet before I got up to do a concert um, that weekend and I was coughing and coughing and there was just no way. And I just looked at the seven ladies who were at my table. I said, because you're at my table, you're my prayer team and pray me through this. And I just sit up and I get saying all the way through. I did not cough. I did not sniffle. I did not anything. And God can do this, you guys. So while we're going to share some just wise strategies for vocal care core a uh, care um we're also gonna say you know always have faith in god no matter what um uh, just have faith in god amen mm. how true yeah how true <laughs> we're gonna start with seven ways to relax your voice okay well you know the first thing is again i just did where you gently place your fingers on the apple adam's apple because that's where your vocal cords lie behind there and we're just going to keep those, say an ah, ah, ah. And you'll notice that the Adam's apple goes down into its lowest natural position of a yawn. It goes, hmm. it's down there. And that's where we want it to be. We want it to be relaxed. I, you know, who here doesn't get a little nervous or, you know, have some tension or get excited right before we go on? 
And you know, one of the responses to that is that we get tight in the throat. And this Adam's apple, especially if we're singing, tends to go up, we strain, don't have enough air. Same for speakers, really. We need, you know, air and relaxation to speak well as well. So this goes up here and it's tense and it chokes off everything. So we want that Adam's apple to be, ah, in a nice ah position. And that's number two would be saying just when you're off stage in the restroom, praying or whatever, wherever you are in your little private space before going on the platform, you want to say, Ah, oh, ah, oh, a nice ah, oh, that's good. And then let me see. Oh, if there's tension, you can put your fingers gently on the hinges because this is where the jaw goes down. Ah, oh. and you know, just massage those really mm -hmm. gently, massage those hinges, and that'll help with relaxation. Warm washcloths. I know um, if it's cold, especially cold weather, and that that cold can get in there and there's tension in there. So a warm washcloth or a warm cloth just kind of apply those warm compresses onto the sides of these hinges here. And I have a question. I have a question for you about the warm washcloth. Uh -huh. I made a mistake one time. My eyes were tired and I put a warm washcloth over my eyes. And when I took it off, it had been too warm and I almost couldn't see. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. Do you ever do a warm one on your throat? Yes. <laughs> so the eyes, I would go cool. I would go cool with the eyes. So a cool washcloth is very cooling and healing. But yes, warm on the sides of your face, warm on your chest, okay. warm. You know, let me just say right now, it's called a warm up, not a freeze up. <laughs> okay, this is the operative word here. I'm going to warm up. And so, I mean, for instance, let me give you an example real quick. Have you ever seen a weightlifter in the Olympics? You know, there's a big bathtub full of ice right on the side and just before they get ready to lift those weights they go over and 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 put their arms and shoulders in that icy bathtub right and then they come over and proceed to lift the weights have you ever seen that happen uh, i don't think so right uh, it's no. called warm up do it and after <laughs> yeah well after you can do whatever you want you know, but not before and so there's the warm up okay so um that relaxation the hens what uh, warm warmth here. Um, let me see. Oh, stretch. And I said stretching, that yawn, that relaxation. Um, I call it a dentist's mouth because whenever we go to the dentist and you get the Novocaine, you know, it's kind of like a can't, well, it'll talk out great. But that's a perfect position for singing. Yes, it really <laughs> is. I hate to tell you that. But that nice relaxation because it just allows um, the notes to come up through and, and that tight. <laughs> It, would, it applies for speaking as well, because I consider this to be the cage door. And so we just don't want to chomp on our words on the way out with lots of tension and rrr. it makes us look mad. It doesn't make us look particularly attractive, that tension, knitted eyebrows and all that. So that relaxing of the face, all of that. And then one of the things, another example is, and especially for singing, if you had a little hook on the end of your chin, and you came along with a bowling ball, ah, oh. let's <laughs> drop that jaw. So that's another thing. And one last little fun <laughs> thing, um, just for relaxation is moisturizer on your lipstick that keeps mm. you from licking your lips, you know, with that mm. nervous thing. And if you really, and I've experienced this before too, just take a little Vaseline and slide it across <laughs> your upper teeth and that mm. helps your mouth slide off easily. Um, I learned that from beauty queens that do that on a parade route, you know, when they have to uh, smile, 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 and that just makes the upper uh, lips just slide over your teeth. Wow. <laughs> you get dry rot in there, right? And right. dry, dry, dry. So it's right. moisture, moisture, moisture. That's what we're doing. Huh? Well, those are amazing. That's so fun. And a lot of them I've just never even heard of or thought of before. So that's really cool. Um, I was thinking about just this, um, this kind of the loosening about the, you know, whether it's the bowling ball or the dentist's mouth, you know, just the relaxing there. So you have some healthy throat recipes. Yes, I do. So really the main thing with a sore throat is warm, salty water, gargle. You don't have to really do anything special, just warm, salty. The salt is very healing. It's soothing. It's kind of has a moisturizing, believe it or not, it does that. And so that's one thing. Wear a scarf. You know, if it's cold, protect, again, warm up a scarf. Yeah. And then, um, well, this is really hard for us, for me. 
I mean, I have the gift of gab. I think you do too, Marty. And it's really, really hard. It takes a lot of discipline to just cool it on the talking mm -hmm. on the day of the event, you know, because we just want to gab, especially if we're at a table, at a banquet table, and people are asking questions and we want to answer. But really that excessive talking, or if you are doing the concert that day, and you go through the whole thing the morning before the, the same day. Don't want to do that. You want to get all your heavy rehearsing done the day before. Just save your voice. Just rest, relax, and, and mm -hmm. save it as much as possible. So and, um, air conditioning, I've been on a platform where I've had actually the cold air blowing, especially in the summer, blowing at me. And when you open your mouth, that goes in. So that tends to you know, just irritate the throat. Um, let me see. And so you want to cover your mo nose and your mouth when it's cold, cold, damp air. One time I was at Yosemite National Park and in front of that gorgeous Yosemite Falls and it's like, oh, wow. Ah, and all that cold, damp air, you know, and all the dampness came into my mouth. And sure enough, I had a sore throat the next couple of days. So you don't want to do the boat on Niagara Falls right the day or <laughs> okay it's a misty <laughs> actually I, I did I was speaking in Niagara Falls and I did forego that trip for that reason mm. so let me just it takes some discipline yeah 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 and I don't know if we're going to talk about this another time so I was thinking maybe I would throw it in here I know for me when I'm going to do a big speaking trip um, not just one talk or like that but if I'm going to be expected to speak multiple times and sing along the way as well and then of course when you go to speak you do have all these auxiliary conversations typically in a room with high volume where you have to speak louder just to be heard mm -hmm. I start usually a month in advance and I start singing um, loudly <laughs> I just practice. I also cheer loud like I'm at a stadium. Um, I do that for a whole month in advance, typically of a large trip like that, where I'm going to be speaking a lot. And so I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, if that's even healthy for me to do that, or if not, what would be a better way for me to prepare? Because um, it has really helped to develop the vocal um, you know, even like sometimes if I'm in Africa or something, I mean, there's no sound system and you really have to project. Right, you do. Okay, so um, yes, di the diaphragm, that's the thing that, that's this big muscle underneath the rib cage. And that is the support. That's when we say, they say support, you know, yeah. sing. Under <laughs> okay, that muscle goes down. These two bags that we call lungs, wind bags in there, they fill up with air and that muscle yeah. supports that. So, so yes, if you're practicing projecting your voice, you are working that muscle. You can also work it by sit-ups and you know, putting some lying down flat, putting some books and deep breathing to keep that muscle really strong. That's where the tension is. That's where the action okay. is. The, there's no tension here in the throat. So we, sometimes when we don't have enough air, we overcompensate by having a tense throat. And, and that's what we want to really avoid. It's this no mm. tension, it's the no tension mouth. The, the action is in the core. That's where you could just pour on all the mm. tension you want. Good to know. But not up in here. And yeah. it would sound better. Um, and so you want to make sure if you are projecting your voice that you're not doing it without a lot of air underneath it. So that you're keeping the tension out of your throat. So that's mm, what I, would, I, love I that. don't know about. Um, that's where the projection comes. That is the um, okay. These are the speakers up here: the sinus <laughs> cavity, the tongue, teeth, and jaw. Your vocal cords are in here. This is how we're built to sing. This is the power source down here. The brain is is the um, you know computer source, but this is the power source down here. So whenever we, you know, I can really project my voice, but I can do it without hurting my voice or getting hoarse because singing, especially you're talking about singing, singing is not like speaking or yelling. It, we hold our voices quite differently than in speaking and yelling. Mm. So that, so for projecting your voice, yelling, um, that's a different, different animal than singing. Hmm. Okay. Um, so so would you say then the practice singing, the practice um, cheering like that, those are really not that helpful to the speaking voice? Uh, not if you uh, if you wear your voice out, you know. You no, can, no, not yeah. wearing your voice out, but just building up. 
building. The and I muscle, think it's, it's building like, the muscle, right? I'm thinking of it as my voice, but you're telling me what I'm really developing is the diaphragm muscle. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's, Interesting. The, yeah. that's the power source. Yeah. Um, these are the speakers. You know, <laughs> these are the speakers. These are the um, strings on your instrument. These right. are the speakers. This is the amp. This is the yeah. power source down here. Nice. So that if you're projecting it, that's where it's coming from. Yeah. Not yeah. Be nice. So I, Be nice. He's, I call them birds and you don't want to chomp your birds on the way out. You know, this is a <laughs> bird cage, you know, so when they're kind of soaring mm. up, you have these beautiful notes, like, you don't want to come down on them. Mm. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you for just clarifying that. So you talk about eating for energy. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So on the day of singing or speaking, um, we do not do as well on two things on a full stomach or a tired voice so that we do not we are not going to do as good of a job and so again it takes some discipline with the with the eating and so i do something i do my meal a few hours before or do something light like a health mm -hmm. bar and a, an apple you know just something refreshing protein bar um and I like vitamin B12 and I do a little sublingual tab under my tongue. It's a lot mm. better than caffeine because you don't crash afterwards. Mm. So that's really good. Or just take a vitamin B complex. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot better. Let me see. Um, get some other ideas. Uh, so eat lightly and um, oh, yes. So why? Why not a full stomach? Why not? Um, and, and there's two things that affect the vocal cords down here, the, the stomach, the diaphragm and all that. And then the sinuses. So if you have a sinus drainage, that's going to hit the vocal cords coming down. Mm -hmm. And if you have um, a full stomach and it's undigested food, that's going to come up on you, especially if you're singing because you're doing a lot more diaphragmatic breathing than than you need to when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things to be aware. That's why we eat light. Um, before we speak. And then there's some not to do things. And um, let me see, let me just go over some of those things we don't, anything tangy. A lot of people do lemon juice. And I would say only if you have a lot of congestion because it's mm. anything like that, anything acidic is for cutting the gunk, cutting the congestion. So we don't want lemon juice, tangy salad dressings, pepper on salad, you know, ground pepper, mm. anything that's going to irritate the throat along with the cold air and other things I talked about. So are there things to really watch out for? And then icy beverages, that is not because again, that would be freezing up and making your throat muscles really tight. So you don't want to do any anything icy, carbonation. I, I always tell people, well, if you want percussion, <laughs> want a little drum machine along with what you're doing, just drink some, you know, carbonated beverage and it. You'll just have all those extra little beats coming. So um, I would not recommend any carbonation and dairy. Stay away from that. I thought, yeah. oh, I'm a professional singer. I could yeah. that, that ice cream cone, you know, an hour and a half before singing. Nah, it just creates congestion. You'll learn. You'll learn if you. Yeah. If, so stay away from dairy. And uh, so those are some things to stay away from. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, one of your points you wanted us to talk about was take time to rest and pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we can do everything we can do. Yes, we are to prepare to just give our best, aren't we? We have our notes, we do everything we can. And then after that, it's all about the Lord and it's all about the Lord in the beginning before right. we prepare. How did we get the engagement? How did he right. create that invitation? How did that all start? He wants us to be there. And it, and it, and maybe at the last minute, as I had an engagement a couple of years ago, I got the flu at the last minute and was unable to go. And so he is in control of all. And yeah. we just, all we can do is our best to prepare. But a lot of that preparation is just spending time at his footstool, in his presence, mm -hmm. just waiting on him. Lord, what am I to say? Who is my audience? Who's going to be there? Who's going to hear it? Who's going to hear what I have to say? And we just say, and then just fill us, Lord, direct us, guide us. Let me touch those hearts. Every heart needs to be touched, but the ones mm -hmm. especially that come so hungry that don't know you. And so that is all that part of preparation that is just imperative when we are the hands and feet of Jesus as we go. Right. 
Yeah, it's one thing for us to go do something. It's another thing for God to do it through us. <laughs> and, and that's where the... Empty, you know, yeah. being an empty vessel. Right. Yes. Yeah. Let him flow it through us. Yeah. You talk about having a just-in-case voice kit. So what would that look like? So these are things you want to take, right, just in case, just have them on <laughs> hand. And that would be clear cough drops. I tried a cherry one time. I was on television. <laughs> You know, beautiful um, aria that I was singing and my husband was splitting a gut in the green room because every time I would drop my mouth, to, ah, I had a bright red tongue. So that was my that was the last time I did cherry pop. pop. So you want to do clear or, you know, lemon if you know, like that, but nothing, nothing brighter than that. OK, so that's one thing you have some or a throat spray. There are quite a few out there. There's mm -hmm. different things you can do. Um, whatever you like. I just find that the cough drops are just, they're syrupy, they're soothing, they're moisturizing. And I just find that those work really great. You want a children's de um, antihistamine syrup. Mm -hmm. Do not take a decongestant full regular dose. Don't do that because it's just going to dry you up. You're not going to have any fun singing your mouth and everything's going to be all dried up because that's what it does, right? So if you take the children's antihistamine syrup, you can control that dose, take a little bit, just a little bit, just enough to take the edge off during your session. And then when you're done, you can do whatever you want after that. And, you know, the other thing with the antihistamine syrup, it makes you can make you sleepy, dingy. Um, you know, that's a good excuse. <laughs> I'd be sleepy and dingy anyway. I have a feeling that way. But at least we won't be, you know. It won't yeah. be because of the antihistamines. So just watching all that cold medication. So that is my suggestion. You might take a thermos with some warm water if there isn't any handy. I know I've run to kitchens at churches looking for warm yeah. water and things. So you might take that. You might need a cup. And, and just a few things like that are really handy. So, so, that's so now I want to kind of circle back to something you said earlier that I'm incubating as you're talking here. So when you sing or when you speak, all of it's coming through the vocal cords. There's right. no other way for it to come out of your mouth. Right. So um, is there a difference between how you want to uh, prepare your kit or prepare your throat for speaking versus singing? I wouldn't say so. It's all okay. just for a healthy throat. Yeah. Um, you might, you know, another thing too is I've even seen these. I don't know if I've seen them lately, little straws with honey in them. You know, so just a, like a little sip of honey or just take a little bit of honey. That's that's mm -hmm. good for soothing the throat. Um, just anything. It's pamper, pamper, baby, baby, <laughs> throat. No matter what, when we're singing or speaking, because it's we're working really hard. I mean, it it's the uh, voice, yeah. yeah. Becky Baker, a friend of mine who is a comedian and everything. She she says that singing and speaking is equivalent to like uh, thirty minutes of that is equivalent to two hours of exercise. Something like that. So something I don't exactly have right. the exact proportions, but it's <laughs> giving so much more. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, and your brain is going and it, it's it's just a lot of work. So right. the last thing we want to do is it transport the tension or the thinking and the mm. brain power into the throat is relax, relax, baby, baby, mm. <laughs> work it down here. So. Not so great. So we talked a little bit earlier about uh, warming up uh, any other temperature controls that I mean, I think it's really helpful just to actually get it in our heads that cold, not so helpful, warm, very helpful, you know, just uh, right. to get that kind of clearly just defined. Yeah. And I think that I don't typically think about like what I'm drinking um, right before I go up, if it's hot or cold, I, I don't think I typically think of that. So that's kind of interesting. Mm, I do think of that. And I'm, you know, really a real proponent for tea and, uh, you know, just a mm -hmm. warming or just even room temperature or warm. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, uh, but again, it's that discipline thing that, right. you know, it's just like, I want, I want my voice to be re really relaxed and, yeah. and to do a good job. So, you know, you can have all of the carbonated beverages you want later in the ice. Later. <laughs> I've been in right. oral rooms where I've seen pictures of ice water and lemon. And I'm going, oh, no. And, oh, and then I've been in large productions where they will, like, they'll have an afternoon and evening. Um, big, you know, these are like big Christmas productions I used to be in. Um, and they would have a full meal 
in between, you know, spaghetti or something. And then, the, and then we're supposed to go on and then sing more. So right. I would actually just be the boring person to go out in my car and have a light meal. And then I would be ready. If I were doing a solo, I would be ready to do yeah. that and not have a full stomach and have it come up on me. You know, I find that if I eat a full meal and I sing, I can taste every course of that meal. <laughs> That's funny. No. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oftentimes, oftentimes I'll have a couple bites and then I'll just set my plate aside um, and just enjoy the conversation at the dinner right. table. And and uh, yeah. oftentimes it's gone by the time I sit back down, which is just fine. Uh, but it it is hard to sing on a full stomach. So is there any other tips that you have for when you are served food uh, right before you're going to sing? Yeah. You know, and in at the table when we're at a, at a banquet, you know, and, and we're all sitting around. And I know people are looking at me thinking like, oh, she eats like a bird, you know, yeah. or something like, wasn't she going to eat any of this, you know? And I do, I just will nibble a little bit because I don't want to offend or just be right. obvious that I'm not eating very much. And, you know, honestly, I mean, I don't eat like a bird. So, <laughs> so you know, right. that, they're probably, probably wondering about that. But and I do tell the event planner, you know, ask if they could just maybe save my plate. Right. And, um, you know, I've got something coming up and they're going to have spaghetti. So I said, hey, can you just box it up? And I'm just going to really enjoy it later on. And, right. and they're fine with that. They understand. I'll sip lots of tea, you know, sip some warm tea, make sure I have yeah. some more at the table, sip and visit and smile and just enjoy yeah. the conversation without right. um you know, without eating a full meal. Another thing I can, I have done before um, is just to put my napkin over, over my plate. Like, so nobody can see really how much I did eat or didn't eat. Uh, yeah. Just because I, I mean, you don't want to make idea. a thing of it, right? I mean, that's the whole point is you're not making a thing of it. Right. You're just doing what you need to do. Right. And typically people haven't really thought that through. I mean, they right. just haven't really thought about that part. Well, of it. And you don't want to, and to think, gosh, she doesn't like the food. Right, or, exactly. Especially if it's from a church kitchen, yes. you know, or, you right. know, like, in no way we want to offend anyone and right. and just say, oh, you know, I'm yeah. I'm really looking forward to singing. So I'm just yeah. going to kind of wait, you yeah. know, before I enjoy this beautiful dessert you have here. <laughs> exactly. Not, you know? Yeah, that's right. No big deal. Yeah. And then you, they're understanding like, oh, okay, got it. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what is the ah uh, dry mouth reliever? <laughs> uh, that was an accident uh, several years ago. A wonderful accident. Mm -hmm. I had a, a cough drop, clear cough drop in my mouth. And I was visiting with people. And I realized I'm talking with this cough drop now in my mouth. So I always on the platform, keep a, try to keep a cup of tea. It looks kind of nice if you have a nice tea cup, but if you don't, you know, anything will do a glass or whatever, sure. but I keep warm water there or, or tea. And so I just, as I realized I was talking, I took it out of my mouth real quickly and I thought, where am I going to put this? So I saw that I dropped it in the cup and oh. then I forgot completely about it. It melted in the, in the hot tea. And then by the time I was in the middle of my presentation, I, Oh, I need a sip. And Oh, it was just instantaneous mm. moisture. And it was like, Oh, what a great thing. And I've been doing it ever since. Love that. <laughs> let that melt in there. And so you get the mentholiptus is kind of my preferred. Um, and then the tea and it just warms and soothes instantly. Mm. And then the, the vapors also open up your sinuses. And so it's a great, great that thing. is fun. That's fun. And I love that it was an accident. <laughs> That's accident. great. So now you just absolutely have to go on. You have a sore throat. Um, how can you um, be as responsible as possible while still doing what you've got to do? Right. You know, you've, we have to consider the event planner and mm -hmm. they've, they've been, you've been on the books for months or maybe over a year. And, and so they're counting on us to come and these happen Things, especially with COVID and everything that's going on and and uh, weird temperatures sometimes that were not unexpected, hot, hots and colds and different things going on. So it happens and just viruses happen. So if we absolutely have to, and I've absolutely had to in several cases, then we have to get that numbing throat spray. Um, I think the brand is chloroseptic. You know, that's the one. I wouldn't get the cherry. Mm. 
better, I don't know, or get clear if you can find something Great. or some kind of numbing cough drop that will mm -hmm. actually numb. Um, and then we have to be really careful not to overextend because if we're talking 45 minutes or talking for an hour or whatever that looks like, or, you know, the talking is a little easier than the singing, but just keeping it a, at a lower, mm -hmm. even level like that. Eat your mic. Eat <laughs> your, your mic. Just turn that up. It's like, okay, so I don't care what color lipstick I'm wearing. <laughs> you know, if you, if you want to check it, that's how close your mic's going to be. You're going to go, oh, that's the color I'm wearing. Okay, so that's how close that microphone is going to be. Your audio tech is going to understand if someone's running sound for you that you're that close. You might have a lavalier. Okay, so that's a different situation. Um, so just being careful to really modulate, take it easy on the voice, do what you can if you're singing, everything in a lower key, um, you know, just throw all your high notes out. That's just not going to happen. We have to be really creative, um, you know, last minute creativity. That's part of our professionalism. Like, what am I going to mm -hmm. do? Can't panic. It's all about God. He's going to do it through for yeah. us. And just maybe talk extra long, you know, give your testimony to share. And he will, he will work through us. And he has proven that to me over and over again. So yeah. you can do it. But then afterwards, you realize that by numbing the throat, which is a what a red flag that we've got something wrong in there, then you need to rest your voice afterwards mm -hmm. for about a week or how long that takes for your voice to come back. Rest and just take it easy. Really cool it as far as talking. Don't just call everybody up the next day and tell them how great it went. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just cool it. Relax. Type it. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. is my suggestion. Yeah. So I want to spend um, our last few minutes together here talking about sometimes that God has um, actually had us say yes or say no in those situations. Mm -hmm. um, last week or two weeks ago, I was doing an interview on someone else's show and I just I explained that I had a little cough left and she said that was fine. And um, then she had said that one time she had laryngitis and she was supposed to sing at a friend's wedding. And mm -hmm. she just really prayed, God, if you just let me sing at this wedding, that's all I'm just asking just for voice enough to sing at the wedding. Mm -hmm. And she did. She went and she sang and she said it was, she sang her heart out and it was wonderful. Just went great. And afterwards she went back and had laryngitis for another three months. Right. And, you know, we don't really get to pick. Um, God just did this huge vocal cord miracle for me last month. And I still have congestion and a sore throat, but I have my voice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he doesn't do it the same every single time. And like right. you said, one time you had the flu and simply couldn't do it. I actually did have to cancel one of the concerts that I had scheduled during the same time period. So God gave me a miracle and then he didn't give me a miracle. Um, what, what we want to just encourage you is, um, on this side of the cross. And I never realized that in John 2022, which is the year that we're doing this interview in, in 2022, in John 2022, mm -hmm. before Jesus went back up to heaven, he, he spoke to peace to them. He breathed on them yeah. and he gave them the Holy spirit. And on this side of the cross, we have the beautiful privilege of knowing the Holy spirit personally, asking him what do you want me to do? Do you want me to cancel this? Do you want me to go forward? You know, and let him help you decide what to do because mm -hmm. you can actually do a lot of damage, long permanent damage to your vocal mm -hmm. cords. Also, if he wants to do a miracle, you want him to do that, you know? So just trusting Jesus. I know you have other situations where you've had to just really trust and uh, call it off or go forward based on what the Holy Spirit tells you, not necessarily just on your logical mind. There, um, years ago, there was a, um, a, a actor, performer in movies. His name was Jimmy Durante. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you, if, you, if you would remember seeing any old movies, and he had such a raspy voice. Okay. Um, I think in, it's the soundtrack in um, Sleepless in Seattle. I think mm -hmm. he's singing at the end or something. You must remember this. Okay. Yeah. So the point is, is that even with a raspy throat, it's, it's about... The really the real goal is being an effective communicator. Mm -hmm. And he, with his raspy, scratchy voice, I, could still sell the message. He could still portray what he was trying to get across to us. And we we got it. And God can do that through us. And mm -hmm. when we have the gospel. How much more do we have right. to share? So even yeah. with a raspy voice, 
and we how grateful we are for microphones at that point that will amplify it for us right mm -hmm. and and yeah. even with that it really is about effectively communicating portraying the truth mm -hmm. of god's word that's really what it's about and mm -hmm. i have a scripture too ephesians 6 19 pray also for me that whenever i open my mouth words may be given mm -hmm. So that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Yeah, I love that. I love what a great way to end. And I want you guys to make sure that you go check out Carol's stuff. Uh, she does have a cookbook, singing up a cookbook, um, uh, book as well as a, a revitalized book for women's okay. ministries. <laughs> there we go, cooking up a song. And you can learn more about that over at carolbrewer.com. Also, she's available to speak at your events via womenspeakers.com. Carol, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your life. I just love you so much. <laughs> thank you, Marty. I love you too. Across the miles, thousands <laughs> miles away. God bless That's you. That's right. Yeah. You know, we're totally across the country now. I'm in Florida and you're in California. So we're about as far as we can be, but um, God just brings our hearts together uh, frequently and just love, love knowing you and love um, you promoting you to the planners who visit womenspeakers.com and you guys just want to check it out. Uh, everything that is available over there. You also do a Bible Chicks uh, podcast. I, yep. I have a podcast at biblechicks.com. Yep. So check all that out and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again for Thank being here. You. Have a wonderful day.